Hello everyone, Mason here. How you doing? Today it's time for my spoiler free review of The Poet, the first instalment in the brand new Samantha Jazz series, first published on the 9th of March 2021 by Lisa Renee Jones. There's a serial killer on the loose, a clean, meticulous, highly intelligent serial killer that only leaves one thing behind, a poem. There's only one person that can understand what they mean, because the poet is leaving these clues behind for her. Detective Samantha Jazz doesn't know it yet, but she's about to be thrown headfirst into a deeply personal game of cat and mouse. I'm a sucker for crime, you give me a halfway decent case and an interesting detective and I'll go along for the ride. I didn't set my expectations too high, because everybody knows that when you're reading crime you get the good, the bad and the utterly average, so I didn't want to get my hopes up. But because of that, the poet exceeded my expectations by a long shot. When starting a new series, there are certain things you've just got to get right to make sure that readers come back for more. We need to get to know the setting, the characters and the tone to expect, as well as having a decent plot to tempt us in. With that being said, let's take a look at how Lisa Renee Jones did with establishing the Samantha Jazz series. For the most part, I thought the poet was great, which is why I wanted to talk about the setting first, because for me that was the weakest part and I wanted to get the negatives out of the way so I could focus on the positives afterwards. The poet was set in Austin, Texas, but for me there was never anything that made me feel like I was right there. In all fairness, Lisa Renee Jones does a great job of describing the stifling heat and there's plenty of mentions of cool, air-conditioned interiors, but other than that, there are only really a few places that we visit regularly, such as the station that Samantha Jazz works at, crime scenes, her apartment and her favourite coffee shop, which is mentioned a lot. There are mentions of other places like the UT Austin campus and the surrounding areas like Brownsville and Houston. I just wanted a bit more. I've never been to Austin and I probably never will, so I wanted to know what it feels like to live there, what other familiar sights, sounds and smells. I wanted the city to have more of a character within itself and hopefully as the series progresses we get a bit more of that. Let's move on and talk about the characters. Detective Jazz was an enjoyable and likeable protagonist. She's clever, confident in her abilities, strong-willed and has absolutely no time for other people's nonsense. On multiple occasions throughout the story she stands her ground and speaks her mind even when the people around her think that she should just keep quiet for her own good and I found that an admirable quality. Shortly before the story begins, Jazz has suffered a personal tragedy and I found that an interesting aspect of the story because we get to spend time in her head at a point where she's trying to get her life back on track and feels a sense of vulnerability. She's doubting herself in areas that she hasn't before but she needs to put that to the side in order to effectively do her job. I like that she lives alone, but she's not lonely. She has family and friends, but she's happy to spend time by herself. She needs that space to think, to put things together, to analyse the clues that she has and work out what's going on. I also enjoyed the interactions she had with the people around her, especially her partner Ethan Langford, who she calls Lang. There's a lot of humorous banter back and forth, they give each other a hard time, but you can tell that they genuinely care about each other and have a strong friendship, which was one of my favourite parts of the story. Lang is cheeky and likeable, he's just as strong willed as Jazz is, he speaks his mind and tells her what he's thinking, they constantly butt heads over one thing or another, but it never got frustrating, it just seemed like two detectives trying to do their job. You can tell that Lang cares about Jazz, he's protective over her, maybe even overprotective, but it never came across as patronising to me, it just seemed like someone looking out for their best friend and feeling concerned when they're in danger, especially considering the work they do and the personal nature of the case. There's a fairly small cast of main characters, other than Lang there's Chuck, the captain and Wade. 
I liked the fact that her interactions with each of these characters reveal something about Jazzy's personality. Chuck is the tech guy. He's eager to please and he wants to be as helpful as he possibly can be. His reactions to certain things that happen are quite amusing and I found him quite likeable. I enjoyed Jazzy's interactions with him because we get to see her warm side. She's got a lot of faith in Chuck and she relies on him a lot throughout the story. She's not afraid to let him know what a valuable member of the team he is and tell him how grateful she is for his help. And she rewards him with chocolate and coffee, which is an amazing thing to do for someone that you care about. Coffee is mentioned a lot in the poet and unfortunately, I'm quite a suggestible person. So I did end up going and buying a white chocolate mocha with an extra shot, which is Jazzy's beverage of choice. It was delicious. With the captain, we get to see Jazzy's determination. He's a bit of an antagonist. He's mostly there to put up roadblocks and read Jazz the riot act when he thinks that she's going too far. Despite the fact that she's five foot five and he's much larger than she is, as well as being her boss, she's not afraid of him at all. She won't be intimidated. She won't back down. She's quite happy to challenge his authority if she thinks he's in the wrong and she'll keep on fighting to do her job and find the truth. We get to see her vulnerability in her interactions with Wade, an FBI agent with whom she has a complicated on and off again relationship. She's got commitment issues, she doesn't let him in all the way, but she's not afraid to open up to him emotionally and tell him what she really thinks. I quite liked the dynamic, I thought it was sweet, and it was also refreshing that it wasn't the sort of story where the detective has a spouse that doesn't like what they do and constantly gives them crap for it. Wade knows what she does, respects her for it, and is just there to support her when she'll let him. There are only two negatives that I can think of. The first is that she does occasionally suffer from everything is my fault syndrome, but considering the personal nature of the case she's working, that's understandable. The second is that she refers to herself as a badass on a few occasions. And that's something that I don't necessarily like. In my opinion, the title of badass is something that should be given to you by other people, not yourself. If you're a badass, we already know. You don't need to tell us. Those are just two small nitpicky things that I can think of though. They didn't have that much impact on my enjoyment of the story. Overall, I thought that Jazz was a strong protagonist. I liked the fact that she didn't have just one character trait. She has multiple facets to her personality and that leaves plenty of room for exploration and development as the series progresses. I feel like once we get two or three books in, I could be quite invested in Samantha Jazz as a main character. As for the tone and the pacing, in my opinion, Lisa Renee Jones nailed it with the poet. The chapters are short, sweet and punchy, and for the most part, they directly follow on from one another, which creates this sense of immersion because you're with Detective Jazz from moment to moment for pretty much the entirety of the case. I don't think there's anything groundbreakingly original. Anyone who's read the fair share of crime novels and murder mysteries is going to be fairly familiar with a lot of the elements in this story, but one of the things that really hooked me was the fact that occasionally we get to see things from the perspective of the poet. On those occasions, we get an insight into how he thinks, how cunning he is, what his motivations are, and how far he's willing to go. Whilst he's crazy, it's not manic and uncontrolled. It's a self-aware, intelligent craziness that he's skilled at hiding. And isn't that the most terrifying type of killer? The one that can hide in plain sight, that can blend in and appear normal, that could be anyone, that could easily insert themselves into your life. They could be someone that you trust, they could be sat next to you right now, and you wouldn't even know it. Because the poet is obsessed with Samantha, there's this sense of paranoia and being watched, and I found it quite tense. It definitely had me double checking that my doors were locked. With its heavy emphasis on poetry and jazz, I felt that this book had a hard-boiled, noir-esque feeling to it. Although Detective Jazz is nowhere near as cynical as the type of protagonist you would expect from a story in that genre. However, I did feel that it could easily have had that classic smoky 1920 setting and I liked it a lot. The audiobook was narrated by Brittany Presley and Scott Brick. They both did a good job 
but I have to admit that I thought Scott Bricks was slightly better. Brittany Presley did a great job as the voice of Samantha Jazz and definitely gave her a likeable quality, but when it came to the male characters, I thought that they all sounded fairly similar and at times I struggled to differentiate between them, especially in the scenes where there's more than one male character present. I learnt the subtle differences towards the end, but only because of the tone and attitude with which the characters spoke. Scott Brick narrates the chapters written from the perspective of the poet, and he reads with such a creepy, enthusiastic intensity that I thought was fantastic. Overall, I enjoyed the poet a lot. Samantha Jazz is a strong, interesting protagonist that I can get behind. If this is the first instalment in a series, you better believe that I'll be coming back for more, because this was a lot of fun. It was exciting, intense, and it left me wanting more. I love the fact that this wasn't just an interesting story. It gave me the creeps. Since becoming completely blind, I don't get that paranoia about windows anymore. But whilst I was reading this, there was definitely a few moments in the middle of the night where I had to go to the bathroom and I couldn't stop imagining someone standing outside of my window. I don't know whether it's more creepy that I can't see and I wouldn't know that they were there, or if I could see and I would spot them. Either way, it gave me that old school paranoia and I thought it was a lot of fun. As I said earlier, I felt that the setting could have been a little bit stronger and I do feel that the ending came so fast that it felt a little bit rushed and it left me feeling like I had whiplash from the brakes being slammed on. Those two things are what has kept me from giving it 5 stars, but it's needless to say that I would highly recommend this book. If you guys want me to do a spoiler talk about this book, let me know and that's something that I can work on. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's review. If you have, say hi in the comment section and we can have a chat about it. Then you should make friends with the light button because they're in trouble and they need your help to save them before it's too late. I'll leave the link to my Twitter in the description and subscribing will make sure that you never miss any of my future reviews. Thanks so much for spending time with me today guys, it's been a pleasure. Until next time, take care. I'm off and you should have a good one.